Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EFG Show. My name is Stephen Dutzman. I am the host, and I am joined, as always, by Jeff Walker from the Frozen North. Sir, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing all right. So, as is our tradition, uh, we talk yes. briefly about wrestling while we wait for people to pop in. So, last week was WrestleMania. Um, yes. So, uh, in general, what was your opinion of the 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 dumpster fire that was a WrestleMania without a crowd? I thought it was good. I will say there are two people on that card who were kind of, I guess, screwed because they didn't have a live crowd in front of them. Okay. One is obvious, Drew McIntyre. Yeah. I think it would have been – I mean, it's great. I'm happy for him. It's great. Uh, watch WWE Chronicle on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, great show. Essentially, uh, he won. The, I mean, he won his belt. Um, and yeah. it was supposed to be this big triumphant moment where the WWE yes. universe, like, came forward and beat the villain of, like, the decade. And yes. he didn't get a pop at all. And so who else uh, was harmed by not having an audience? Otis. Yeah, also Otis. Otis got his triumphant win over Dolph Ziggler, and then Eve. Could you imagine a hundred thousand people when he gave Mandy Rose that kiss? Yeah, it would have been it would have been extra special. I agree. I'll tell you one person who did not need a crowd, and that was, um, uh, <laughs> the, the what's her freaking uh, Alexa Bliss and what's her name. Uh, Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross. She doesn't need an audience because she's crazy and sold to an <laughs> audience. Even though um, I know that's yeah. her. I know that's her gimmick is that she's nuts, but it was great. So anyway, uh, we have people here. Um, so welcome everybody to the EFG show. As we as is always our tradition. That's just me and Jeff talking about wrestling while we wait for everybody to show up. So um, not as slow of a news week as it has been in the past. Um, so. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, let's just get right to it. The uh, you know we had the for our rundown. We're gonna get to talk about the PlayStation Five controller, which is way more exciting, I think, than some people might think. You might be like, "Oh man, PlayStation Five controller. That sounds like garbage." No, trust me. It's actually interesting stuff in this new thing, uh, and we'll show you a picture of it so you can uh, kind of ooh and ah at it with us. Uh, we're gonna talk about. Uh, the fact that we used our power wisely. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about that. Uh, that's what we in the biz like to call a tease. We definitely used our power wisely, uh, and I support that. Uh, we're going to talk about a new game called Grounded, which is coming to Xbox Game Preview and Steam Early Access later this year. We'll talk about a No Man's Sky update, some Legos, and a new and interesting update to Streets of Rage 4. Uh, but first, Jeff, every week, on the Engage Family Gaming uh, Facebook page and then published as a post on the Engage Family Gaming blog roll, you produce a release list, which, at least this week, has probably one of the biggest games of the year. Yes. Um, so why don't you uh, give us a rundown for what games decided to come out the same week as the one game to rule them all <laughs> for 2020, more likely? Uh, so, games that have come out this week on Tuesday, April 7th, we had Disaster Report for Summer Memories for PS4 and Switch, and Grim Valor for Switch. On okay. Wednesday, April 8th, we had Convoy, a tactical rogu roguelike for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. We had Galaxy of Pen and Paper Plus One Edition for Xbox One and Switch. Okay. And the Pen and Paper Games Bundle for Switch. Um... And then Tower Tale for Switch and Ubongo for Switch. And I know we talked a little bit about the pen and paper, Knights of Pen and Paper, coming to Xbox Game Pass last week. Mm -hmm. So now you can get them on Switch. It looks like there's a new one called Galaxy of Pen and Paper. Sure. So Starfinder to their uh, – yeah, it's fine. So it's yeah. sci-fi, Knights of Pen and Paper. That's great. Knights of Pen and Paper is like a weird role-playing game that's meant to be like a super riff on like Dungeons and Dragons. So my guess is without knowing anything about it, but like that's probably just sci-fi. It, it sounds great. These are meant yeah. to be silly role-playing games with a little bit of tactical depth, but they're fun. Uh, and then today coming out, we had Beholder 2 for Xbox One, Bridge 3 for Switch. I had to yell. There was an exclamation point. Okay. Fight. Respect. Fight of Animals for Switch, 
Gunbrick Reloaded for Switch, and Monster Viator for Switch. And then Friday, tomorrow coming out, we have BQM Block Quest Maker for Xbox One. Sure. Which looked like a Minecraft knockoff. A Brave Land Trilogy for Xbox One. Final Fantasy VII Remake for PS4. Mm-hmm. A, when we'll get back to that one. Yeah. Abduction for Xbox One. Retro Tanks for Xbox One. RMX Real Motocross for Switch. And then before we talk about the big game, we do have a couple games coming out on Saturday this week. What? Which is okay. Yeah, which is a r- rare occurrence. But we have Space Engineers for Xbox One and Tharsis for Switch. Sure, whatever. I mean, uh, I published that on the Engage Family Gaming website and didn't even realize they were Saturday games. So, <laughs> all right, pick of the week is pretty obvious. It's Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah. The game we never thought was going to happen, and it's here. Like, I was watching people stream it today because there were uh, yeah. people who bought it from the Square Enix store, uh, got it early. We have some pictures. I, it, go ahead. I was going to say, I thought I was so excited. I thought I was going to get my game early because typically when I pre-order from Best Buy, they ship it out the day before and it gets here on those Fridays. Um, but they shipped it out ye- yesterday instead of f- Thursday, today. So I was hoping I'd get it, but instead I forgot I ordered <laughs> Disney Sum Sum for my daughter, and that's the game that showed up today. Oh, man. So you actually had a box arrive. Yes, from oh. UPS. I got oh, my UPS hurts. orders mixed up, and my wife, what she went to get our daughter after we got done with work, and, and she, she goes, man, I thought you'd be downstairs playing your game. And then she looked and goes, oh, that's the game that arrived today. Oh, that hurts. We did play Disney Sum Sum for about an hour with my daughter, though, so we had some so quality like family. It? What did she, she did? think about she... Disney Sum Sum? She... So what she thought, what I thought, may be two different things. Uh, got it for sale on Amazon for twenty dollars. I would not spend any more than twenty dollars if you get it not on a sale. It's still fifty. Okay. Um, she enjoyed like you unlocked characters. And she enjoyed seeing who was going to come out of the presents. But then she doesn't really understand games. So she didn't understand why we couldn't just keep seeing who was going to come out with the presents. Because we had to earn coins to get more presents. Okay. Well, she's little. so. Yeah. So she liked seeing who was going to – she played a little bit. She still doesn't understand a controller. So. All right. Well, she's little. We'll give her, we'll give her a little bit of a break. That's going to be one of those games that you're going to play for an hour. You're going to forget about it. And then in a couple of years when she's older, you're going to find her just like just zoned in on that because you guys are such yeah. Disney freaks. That's yeah. one of those games that has a long tail. So well done with a $20 investment on that. Yep. I um, I killed two birds with one stone. I found a game my daughter likes to watch us play, and I at, was able to add another game to my game shelf. Also Disney oh. stuff. So yes. I'm I'm down. Um, yeah. So my I was just checking to see if maybe somehow it was delivered, and I just needed to go get it in my front on my front door because I ordered it from Best Buy also. But my copy will be coming tomorrow, and I mine too. I have already laid down the law that because it's for work, guys. This is important. <laughs> um, I will be playing it on the big television uh, for most of the weekend. Although I have been advised by the general that I have to be kind to them and let them watch their anime for at least a little bit of time. I have begrudgingly agreed because I am a kind master. However, uh, you know, we'll be all right. I have to sleep at some point so they can figure it out. It is, (laughs) I still can't believe that it's actually here. Like I need to pinch myself before I put this game in because it shouldn't have been a thing, right? Like Final Fantasy VII is here. It's so weird. It's just so weird. But here we are. It's getting great reviews. They're saying it's a 30 to 40 hour game. Yeah. So. Um, That really is part of the things that really kind of. Like, I don't know how they turned Midgar into 30 to 40 hours. Obviously, I will find out. You know, this isn't going to be like this unsolvable mystery. The answer is, well, dummy, just play the video game. So I'll be all right. It's just, I don't know how, and I'm excited to find out. I More than anything else, I'm excited 
for the music. I'm excited to really get into it. And this is going to be one of those experiences where I will play it and then I get to wait for the next one. And I'm not looking forward to that, but I really never re- super got into Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation. I don't. I didn't rank it very highly. I still don't. But this is no. a big deal for me because I really want to see if I can experience that story in a different way. And maybe by them kind of putting a little bit more energy into some of the finer plot points that were kind of buried and I missed them, yeah. I think I might be able to understand and appreciate it a little bit more, which I'm excited about. And the other thing is... Yeah. And... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Finish your thought, then I'll go with mine. I think for me, and this is one of the things that I talked to them about, is like, this is a Final Fantasy release. Like, this isn't some spinoff. This isn't, you know, Chocobo Dungeon or whatever. This is my Final Fantasy game. And so, you know, when Final Fantasy 15 came out, I parked myself in front of the, the TV. I, at that point, I was reviewing it for uh, Pixelkin.org, and I, and I played it. And there were no interruptions, and I just went... Because it was that important to me, because Final Fantasy is like that series for me, and that's what's happening with this. This is, for me, for all intents and purposes, this is a full-fledged Final Fantasy game, and so I'm excited to see what what comes of it. The reviews have been great. Everybody that I trust who has played it has said that it is, you know, uh, something that they're very excited for. Can't wait. So, for those of you watching, obviously we will talk about it. There will be a review up on EngageFamilyGaming.com, and... We'll, we'll we'll be talking about this one because my biggest issue is the language. I'm hoping that I doubt there's a way to turn it off or anything, but that is something that is going to be an issue for us as from like a family gaming perspective, but I guess we're all just yeah. going to see what happens. You know what I mean? Yep. So, um, um, yeah. It, anything else? Well, I was just saying, and I think I've told the, this story on the show before, but as I said, I Final Fantasy, I... I know it makes you mad every time I say this, was before I got into big RPGs. Uh, I don't even know if we had a PlayStation when it came out. I know we had the Super Nintendo for a little bit, for a while, and then we, whatever was next. I can't remember what year we got the PlayStation, but I went back to Final Fantasy VII last year on the Switch when it came out digitally, and it doesn't age very well. Like, to get someone to play it now who hasn't played it before, like, say, some of these younger kids, I think it'd be really hard. And it's also not a very pretty game. And so I only got as far about as this remake is getting. So, which makes me excited. At least I've seen the part this game is supposed to cover. Uh, My question to you is, so now that this is out, when do you think we will see Final Fantasy Remake Part 2? Okay. I'll talk about that in a moment. We'll f- we're going to put a pin in that just because we get, did get a question from the comments. Um, and I, I cannot ignore. Oh, wow. I don't know what I'm doing to uh, poor Kate's comment. It's making it all weird. Uh, so Kate, super fan, has said, uh, will you be streaming Final Fantasy VII? Um, I hadn't thought about it. Maybe. I will. So probably not Friday. But it is possible that I will maybe set up the lab here and and do some streaming if I can figure out how to get that done. If I do, I will try and figure out how to do that on Saturday morning and I will uh, make an announcement on our socials, you know, by midday and maybe I'll, you know, do it Saturday and Sunday if I do it. I will admit that would probably make my kids happy because then they can kind of be somewhere over there while I am here. Um, but we'll find out. Uh, I, I, you know, it, worst case, I will be capturing some video so we can make a video review because we need to start doing those as much as possible. So at least with bigger releases, but I don't know. We're, we're going to find out. I think a big piece of it is going to be whether or not I can play the game and focus on an audience. Cause like while I was playing a short hike or whatever, when I did the, you know, keeping people company stream, That was a very simple game that was easy to just kind of like walk around and like do stuff. If Final Fantasy is like really complicated, I don't think that I would be able to do like any do justice to the experience and stream it. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll find out. We will find out. I will decide on Friday whether or not I am too crappy to stream that game. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, we do have some pictures up in of the Crazy Collector's Edition. Jeff Pisano, the EFG video guy, posted some pictures in there of the uh, Super Duper Deluxe Collectible Edition. They came with like a Play Arts statue action figure thing of Cloud with his motorcycle. I was very, very jealous of it. So if you want to see what the Collector's Edition looked like, just head on into EngageFamilyGaming.com slash community and take a look. Um... Yeah, so I can't wait to text with you, Jeff, and talk about this game because both of us are going to be playing it, and it's not like we're going anywhere this weekend. Nope. So let's go. Let's get to the next madness, which is Madness. March Madness. Madness. We have half of the Elite Eight ready to go. It is now yes. flying. And so we have half of the Elite Eight. Why don't you tell us? Because people are now getting to the point where they are <laughs> – everybody's mad about every one of these. I've heard yes. this is a tragedy. I can't believe you're making us make this choice. Guys, listen. This is how brackets work. It's always <laughs> yes. painful. This is all great fun until we're going to torture you by making you uh, pick. Imagine what the finale is going to be, guys. Um, but this has been a lot of fun and I can't wait until next year when we do, uh, the SNES, that's going to be yeah, so bananas. I, I think so too. I think the SNES has way more better games than the NES does. I think, I think uh, that is ab- absolutely true. But I think what's going to happen is, could you imagine like a world where like a link to the past and Mega Man X just have to just chill? Yeah. Like, I mean, hopefully that? Like, but anyway. I will say uh, Hopefully, in the SNES tournament, Mega Man fares a little better than it did in our NES tournament. Yeah, it was just bad beats, I think. But anyway, let's talk about – before we talk about the future, let's live in the present, which is yes. uh, who are the four games that are the first half of the Elite Eight? So the first half of our Elite Eight are Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Brothers 3 beat out Castlevania 3 to advance. Okay. Uh, Final Fantasy edged out Castlevania to advance. So both Castlevania games games taken out in the same round. I mean, they made it to the Sweet 16. Not bad. They not did. a bad showing. And it's not like they lost to, like, you know, Blaster Master or something, right? Like, they lost to, like, legit yeah. games. By the way, why they is did. Blaster Master not on this list? Anyway, that's for the next one. It, it is. It was uh, Final Fantasy beat it in round oh, one. Oh, well, yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> you got crushed by a number one season. I know. Right? There's, with 64 games, it's hard to remember what's made and what's not. Well, I barely remember what I had for lunch today. So uh, keep going. <laughs> so uh, who else we got? Uh, I think I think I know this bracket so well because I'm the I'm the one updating it. So I have like, Noah, like, well, yeah. the back of my hand by now. Yes, that is true. Uh, but, I, but I'm finding it a lot fun, and I can't wait to start doing the next one. Well, we, uh, we are going to, um, so, and we're going to talk about that pretty much. We're going to start talking about it almost as soon as this one is done. Although we're not going to roll right through them, but anyway, so what are the other brackets? Yes. And then the other two games that have made it into the elite, elite eight. eight are the legend of Zelda completely trounced excite. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and to keep it real, Legend of Zelda has had an easy way through this bracket. So, but I, I think it's going to win. But I think it's facing its hardest competitor yet with Tetris coming this next round. Man, the Legend of Zelda versus Tetris. Oh my yeah, and, god! Yes, and the reason I say it's going to be a, a harder fa- battle is because the legend, the original legend of Zelda is hard to go back to, but Tetris, Tetris is Tetris. Tetris is timeless. It's a, oh man. Yeah. Jenna, next matchup in the elite eight. Think about this one. The legend of Zelda, the original versus Tetris. Like people are talking about, man, I can't believe you're making us do these, these, th- these horrible matchups. the, I mean, how did, we are so mean, but this is part of, we knew this was going to happen. This is what the brackets are. This is what the brackets are all about. So, yep. and, and today, just a few minutes ago. Yeah. We have two more left and then we'll probably take a day off and we'll get the elite eight. Two more days left. We have four more polls coming up. 
Yeah, and to, so today coming up that just went live at nine was Super Mario Brothers versus Kirby's Adventure. Okay. Uh, I voted Super Mario Brothers. I predict that will go through, but you never know. I voted, uh, for the record, for Kirby's Adventure. I'm not a huge original Super Mario Brothers fan. I love. I mean, it is what it is. Like it's iconic. However, it's not my favorite, and I and I really do like Kirby's Adventure a whole lot. And then the other poll coming up today was Duck Hunt versus Super Mario Brothers Two. Okay, and you voted. I voted Super Mario Brothers Two, which is my least favorite of the Mario's on the SNES. I mean the NES, but I also think it has more staying power than Duck Hunt does at this point. Uh, I, 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 let me be super real on this. I have no idea how Duck Hunt has survived as long as it has. Well, I'm looking. The two games it's being out was it's been in some weird matchups. Is why uh, River City Ransom and Tecmo Super Bowl were the two games that beat out. So th- that's the thing, though. But anyway, I, I j- I'm very surprised that Duck Hunt has lived as long as it has. I, with that said. I also don't really like Super Mario World, uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, so I voted for Duck Hunt. And <laughs> this the only reason for Duck Hunt for me. I really love watching kids first time playing that game. Because it is still outside of the fact that you can't play it on a modern television because the refresh rate is too high. But you can't no, you can't play the original Duck Hunt. No. But yeah, you, it was on the it was on the virtual console. But we're talking about like the original Duck Hunt. Oh. So, the you're right though. Thanks for the reminder. They did put it on virtual console, so you could play it with the with the the Joy Cons. The Wii modes. The Wii My bad. Thank you for correcting me. Evan has been correcting me nonstop for the last like <laughs> four days. Last night. I was listening to an ep- a episode of Epic Rap Battles of History, which is my favorite YouTube channel, and that is it. it the battle was not family friendly. Oh, Let's definitely not family friendly. And it was uh, Teddy Roosevelt versus Winston Churchill, and he heard it, and he was like, "Who are the two? Like, is that Epic Rap Battles of History?" And I was like, "Yeah," because I do occasionally just listen to them. And he's like, "Who are the people?" And I was like, it, "Just the, Teddy Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, two guys you don't know." And then he goes. You mean Winston Churchill, the prime minister of the UK during World War II, and Teddy Roosevelt, the president at the same time? And I was like, fair enough. Fair Uh, enough. I'm going to correct Evan. Teddy Roosevelt was not president during Winston Churchill's time. He was? Well, all right. Franklin Roosevelt was. Wait. Teddy Roosevelt was president at the turn of the century in 1900. Yeah, you're, you're right. He, <laughs> Sorry. Actually, I don't even think he said it. Evan, how did you describe Teddy Roosevelt? He's got headphones on. He's watching anime. I'll let him go. Once he was done correcting me. Uh, yeah. He, but real. I am oh, not sorry. a history guy. That's what I. So I don't know. But he definitely crushed me because I expected he had no idea who either of them were. And the fact that he got that he was a president, I'm fine. <laughs> right? Um, the fact that he knew he was a president and that Winston Churchill was a prime minister, I'm good enough. So, okay. And then, just real quickly, since we won't have time to talk about them, since this will actually almost be over by the time next week's show comes around, um, our other two Sweet 16 battles that are left, that'll be going up tomorrow at 9, are Contra versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Okay. I think this will Contra will be the first number one seed knocked out. Okay. I I I'm gonna vote him in T two. All right. I, I, I agree too. I, I would totally pick TM and T two over that. I I can't wait till next year when we do SNES because Turtles in Time will make the list and it is one of my favorite SNES games of all time. I mean yeah oh man Turtles in Time is so good. Yeah we'll what the 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 SNES is going to be? Oh wow, well, we got a we got a Contra fan in the house. That's fine. This is what's so crazy about this is that there are no wrong answers at this point. Like in no. the earlier rounds of March Madness, there were incorrect decisions, right? It, there were some things that were just you there you couldn't get it. There there was there was a possibility to just be objectively wrong, right? 
Now <laughs> there really is no such thing as a wrong answer. I can't hate on anybody's vote. Like, so I voted for Duck Hunt because of how much I absolutely love people and watching people's first experiment experience with that game, especially kids, right? It was a retro store that we went into and they handed Duck Hunt to my kids and they were playing with it and just watching that joy was so great. And I absolutely loved the game. And my it was the first game that I like watched my dad play. <laughs> but the you know, but but all the people that are voting Super Mario Brothers 2, like I can't get mad at that. That game is classic. So and you know, Kate coming in, Contra was the first game she did speed runs of. Listen, Contra is great. We're, all of these games are great. We're gonna be we're gonna be looking at the top eight NES games, and so all of yes. them are gonna be amazing. Uh, Bill Hawkins, uh, a LARP friend of mine, was uh, giving me some. He let the go figure. The history major shows up as I start making stupid history comments. Like he's the guy that's gonna be <laughs> like, "Dude, you wrong." Uh, also, the dude who I know who will absolutely never let me live it down. I'll walk in. I'll see, he'll see me at a LARP event, and he'll be like, so, how about them Roosevelts? Like, he's going to make an NPC named <laughs> Roosevelt that I'm going to have to deal with because that is that is Bill Hawkins. So, uh, welcome to the EFG show, Bill. Thanks. So, all right. That's the March Madness update. Yes. And then one more oh, coming one out more. tomorrow. Yeah, we, yep. we have DuckTales versus Mega Man 2. Mega Man 2 for life. Mega Man 2 is my ride or die. I love Mega Man 2 so much. So much. Uh, and it's my favorite Mega Man game. I I'm so I don't I I almost don't really care what's up against it. So wh- what do you think? Uh-oh, we lost Jeff. He'll be back. Um, Jeff, are you back? You're there. You're back. Oh, he froze again, but let's just move on. Um, okay. The giving him a second. Yes. Kate Mega Man two. See in the comments. Yep. Cannot wait. So now that we've done the March madness update, Jeff, are you good? There we go. There we go. My internet. My internet went somewhere, and I but, don't know where it but went. Then but then you did the thing. You did the thing, and you fixed it. So, all right, guys. Yeah. So we've done the, we've done the release list. We've done the March Madness update. Let's get to it. This week they announced the PlayStation Five controller. So in a in what would have been a relatively slow news week, uh, because I, I think eventually we're just gonna start running out of news, right? They, they, they're delaying everything barely any, I mean everybody's working at home so <clears throat> excuse me so here we are uh we got we got information about the PlayStation 5 controller so I'm going to throw it up on the screen because I can do that now and <laughs> it does cover me and Jeff's faces but you know covering mine is doing y'all a favor so here we go this is the PlayStation 5 controller Jeff Tell us about this wonderful, wonderful looking device. So the PlayStation 5 controller, which is not going to be called the DualShock 5, which everyone suspected, it is going to be called the DualSense. Um, Just going through the PlayStation blog post, it's going to have haptic feedback, which I assume is kind of like the um, Rumble, HD Rumble, their version of HD Rumble. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, it's that's... going. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so it's going to have a more um, innovative rumble feature like the Joy Cons have. It's going to have. Um, let me. See, what do? What are they calling it with the trigger? Adaptive triggers. So, like for example, if in a game you're going to shoot a bow and you got a bow with a tighter string going to be harder to push down your trigger buttons than it would be if you had a looser string on the bow Mm -hmm. so that's cool i think that's cool i also think it's going to be one of those features that is way overused in the beginning then in a couple years no one's going to use it yes absolutely kind of like the light on the ps4 the dualshock 4 now just there i mean i thought it was the coolest thing when i think what game was it 
I think it's Grand Theft Auto Five when the cops are after you, your light starts flashing blue and red. Or there was yep. a one game where the light changes color depending on what your health is. So, but I th- and then just going through this, some other things. There is no longer a share button, but it's going to be known as a create button. Yep. Which we have no idea what that means. <laughs> so it says, with Create, we're once again pioneering new ways for players to create epic gameplay content to share with the world or just to enjoy for themselves. We'll have more details on this feature as we get closer to launch. And it's interesting because I this was a couple weeks ago. You know, you go through your Facebook timeline and it goes this day, what happened on this day. And not too long ago, the they were announcing new things for the PS4 because one of my Facebook status was the share button idea sounds stupid. <laughs> well, that aged well. <laughs> that did not, yeah. Yeah, that did not, and it's funny, you know, because now here I am doing a video game thing on the internet. Wish I had the opportunity to stream. But it's just funny how even looking back, you know, what was that, 2014, 2013, and even then, you know, gaming online, like sharing what you're playing, wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah, no, the, and I think the create button which they said that they're going to give us more details as the system move, you know, as the system announcements roll on, as they give us more details. I am very curious what that means. Cause it sounds like it's not just going to be a share button. My hope is that using the create button, it will bring up some onboard tools to help you yeah. take screenshots and take picture, take screenshots and take video and, mold them and edit them a little bit better already you can do some pretty cool stuff with clips i've actually started practicing with some of it i made some really awesome very short videos of uh assassin's creed where like some of the panoramas because man some of the screenshots in there are just great and that's one of the things that i think is really important is that these game systems the ps4 or rather the ps5 and the xbox series x these things are going to be putting out some crazy graphical powerhouse like power they're powerhouses and so why not dedicate tools to allow people to create cool content with it i cannot wait to kind of get in and learn those tools and as i play games just share stuff that's going to be great. I, I'm going to be doing that with Final Fantasy for, uh, 7 Remake. Can't wait to do a little bit more of that as you know, with Horizon 2 or whatever the next generation yes. of games are. Uh, Kate did have something to say. Didn't want to ignore her comment. She says it looks like a Stormtrooper. That is not the first time I have heard that thought about the new PlayStation 5. Uh, just looking at it again, it does look Stormtrooper-ish. It's the white on black that really did that. All over the internet were mock-ups of different color combinations and, you know, kind of using that empty white space as a canvas to put more stuff. The PlayStation DualShock 4 has come in a number of different color iterations. It's in rose gold and now it's in like Nova purple, everything like, listen, we're going to see so many different versions of this controller. It's going to be wonderful can't wait to see but i'm kind of excited for kind of the sharp white controller the only issue is uh i'm gonna have to be very careful when my children use it while they're eating cheetos because they're gonna get (laughs) nasty stuff all over my bright white controller jen what do you think Uh, i have no idea what you're talking about what'd you say do you want to come do you want to come here and look at the new playstation 5 controller oh i saw that yeah what do you think are, are we going to be very concerned with our children eating Cheetos while using that controller? Yeah, Doritos, but yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like the look of the controller. Oh, uh, Evan doesn't like it. I don't like the shape. He doesn't like the shape. Well, I mean, I, I heard a lot of folks say that it kind of looks like an Xbox controller. It does. I've seen that too. Uh, my main concern is just looking at these buttons, it looks like they go down into the controller. They're not like sticking up a little bit like a typical controller's been having buttons Mm, i I can see what you mean but there's other pictures on the internet where you're they're seeing it like laying down and it looks like regular controllers 
does it okay that was my big concern i'm like if they're inset like that i could just see especially people with grimy hands touching it getting stuff stuck down in there yeah um and breaking them and i'm sure these are gonna be a lot uh another interesting feature that's on there is and and by interesting i i don't say awesome on purpose we all know i'm an unmitigated hype monster but in this case all of those controllers are going to have a built-in microphone array. Yes. And that by itself is not bothersome. My real issue is I'm hoping, and I will make an article as soon as I know how this is done, to instruct people on how to turn off the microphone on your PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. Because if you have a kid playing games, the last thing you need is to have an open mic with a kid playing a game, you know, even if they're playing Fortnite or something simple, which, by the way, it hasn't been announced yet, but of course Fortnite is going to be playable on the PS5. It hasn't been announced, but come on. Uh, my son asked me that yesterday, so I thought I would share. Of course Fortnite's going to be playable on PS5. Uh, but <laughs> they're going to have this microphone in there. The first thing we're going to need to do is be able to turn it off. I think that's a, a yes. something that will – I hope it is opt-in. Like, I hope you have to turn it on, but somehow I think that you, that's not going to be the case. So we're just going to have to tell people, turn your, turn your mics off unless you're going to have the kids use it. With that said, I think that also it, the fact that you're going to have a controller that will not only you'll be able to play, but you'll also be able to do voice chat with your friends without having to use like an expensive headset or earbuds or anything like that. I think that is somewhat cool. I mean, there are a, a lot of kids that are, staying in touch with their friends from school by playing Fortnite and Minecraft. Yeah. Giving, and, and I'm sure there are some kids that might be missing out because maybe they have the console, but like some of those extra accessories are expensive. Having that just built into the controller does kind of democratize it a little bit. I know it's a small purchase, but for some, for some parents, you know, I would imagine, listen, we spent all this money on the console. We're not getting you anything else other than the games, you know, those extra pieces or they could get lost or broken. Having it built into the controller, I like, to a degree. What do you What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, and on the blog post, they did talk about that, chatting with friends without a headset. They said it's ideal for jumping into a quick conversation, but of course, if you are planning to chat for a longer period, it, it's going to have, it's good to have that headset handy. And I'm wondering what they mean is that if maybe if you're talking through the controller, if the battery life just, gets drained like nothing else um I, I mean i'm sure that that's gonna have something to do with it but i think there's another piece where it's just you know ideally it's not the best you know like yeah you know like hey guys you know what's going on jeff like you're shouting at your lap as opposed to you know the ideal with the headset on and stuff like that um i think this is really just meant to capture incidental users and it also means Everyone has a, a, a mic. Everyone. Yes. Everyone playing PS5 has a mic, period. And that makes a big difference for a lot of these games as a service, right? Destiny and Fortnite. I mean, Destiny is free to play now, right? And Fortnite is free to play. And Minecraft is cheap. And so there's a lot of these games that are multiplayer focused that pull people in for a long period of time and the and voice chat is important for a lot of those games so now everyone on the ps5 it's built into the controller again i just want to make sure you can turn it off easily that's my only real issue so so that's the ps5 controller uh jeff you excited i am it means it's closer to coming out um I, I can't wait. I just want them to announce some games so I know what to be hyped about. Soon. Soon, Jeff. Soon. I'm also excited, and you're right. It does make it real. They also indicated, again, they kind of doubled down on the 2020 release date, so they're still sticking with it that it's coming this year. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, Kate, the superfan, says that she imagined that it would also be great for recording your own videos. Something I had not thought about, but you're right. That is something that making sure that everybody has a microphone means that for some of those kind of quick improvised videos, maybe using the create button, that uh, that would give people some cool options. I like that idea. That sounds pretty cool. And 
let's see here. Having it built into the controller probably means that because of the connection, they might be able to have that that microphone maybe isolate some of the sound coming out of the game. Maybe better make some better quality stuff. I don't know. That could be. There, there's all sorts of stuff that that could be cool coming out of this thing. So. Uh, that's the PS5 controller. Next, let's talk about the coolest thing that happened this week. And the coolest thing is because I am 100% taking responsibility for it. I <laughs> tweeted at the Just Dance account last week during the EFG show, and I said, hey, guys, why don't you make Just Dance Unlimited free for a month since all these kids are at home? And what did I use my incredible power for, Jeff? I made him to get it for free. So I'm going to argue you may tweet at just dance. I, I jumped over the small guys. I tweeted right at Ubisoft. So maybe it was really me that did it. (laughs) I mean, I guess that's fair, but I'm still taking responsibility. It was the EFG show. We used our power for the forces of good. And now everyone that has just dance 2020 now has just dance unlimited for the next month. And there are a lot of songs on there. Uh, we showed that to my daughter, and she went absolutely bananas. And did how many songs did she do today? She did like three or four. No, she did five. She did five, and will very much be doing more of them. I think the only reason she won't be doing it the entire weekend is because of Final Fantasy VII Remake. She loves her some Just Dance. She needs to send videos to of her doing Just Dance style dances to her gym teacher for PE credit. So that's what we got. So we did it folks. We used our power for good. Uh, because with great power comes great responsibility is, uh, that's, that's, uh, what I've always said. So, Oh, and, uh, Kate says they've been doing a lot of dancing for indoor recess on rainy days. Listen, we are all trapped in the house. And so let's dance a little bit. It snowed here in Michigan today, twice. Well, that's because you're from the frozen north. It's Michigan. <laughs> um, I mean, what do you expect? Uh, that's all I got. It snowed. <laughs> um, it thundered today for us. We had a. Good it thundered old... yesterday for us. So. Oh, so you got all sorts of weird weather. For us, we just we thundered have all today. The weird weather. It was, and then when I went out to get pizza tonight, it was crazy. Because, yeah, we are supporting our local businesses. We have a little pizza yep. place in town. I can't leave them out. And I'm a, I'm a sucker for Greek-style pizza, guys. Uh, I can't help it. Do you have Greek-style pizza where you guys are at? With, like, the buttery no. crust? What, what kind of pizza do they give you in in uh, Michigan? I almost said uh, Wisconsin. Detroit. What kind of? Uh, yeah. Uh, Detroit pizza, which is kind of ha- Little Caesars because that's from Detroit. It kind of has, like, the cheesy buttery crust as well. All right. So they call it Detroit style. Uh, if you watch Good Mythical Morning, Rhett and Link got all the way to their finals of best pizza styles until they realized that it was Little Caesars was Detroit pizza. Then they said, no, we can't let Little Caesars win. I mean, I guess that's fair. Yeah, Greek pizza is amazing. Um, Kate is is uh, sticking up for me. Greek pizza, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's good. It's good. I, and they're, and they're, they're so nice to us. And so, I mean, obviously we had to support the local businesses. Yes. Support your local businesses as much as you can. Yeah. Definitely in these times, especially these restaurants that are open. Um, I mean, we last weekend, we went and ordered, they do have pizza, but we didn't order pizza, but we ordered dinner and I went and picked it up for yeah, our family. Just, uh, um, it's so weird out there right now though, with just, you know, this place you can never get a front row parking spot and i parked right next to the front door yeah no it's crazy every time i get in a vehicle to go i had to go get toilet paper today it was it was time and just going there i mean it's been just such a weird experience but it's heartening to see that it it's like it's heartening to see people kind of working together yeah, the community coming together, uh, that's definitely for sure. Um, a great family uh, YouTuber to watch is the Holderness family. Yeah. I don't know. I think know who they I, they've, been doing the, they've been doing a new song every day. Yes. Their one that just came out, thanks everyone that's working out there. It's great. It's awesome. 
Yeah. Uh, I would definitely support that family. They're doing songs to fight the gloom. Yeah. They're oh man, they are so great. And we're gonna have to take a look at it. They've been doing one a day, which is very uh that is an aggressive timetable. However, if I were a content creator and my full time job was to create well, I mean I am, but if my full time job was to create content, you better believe if I was trapped indoors and had no excuse to, an excuse to not leave, I would make as much content as I possibly could. So um yeah, we do once a week now. We before it was not, but now we've been doing once a week trying to hit up the local businesses, trying to help where we can. So yep. um, I went to go get the I for, I totally forgot what I was even getting at, but I went to oh let's see here oh yeah Kate saying that there's a big movement right now for restaurants allowing people to donate money, which gets pooled and provide food to hospitals. How cool is that? It's great to see communities pulling together, doing all sorts of stuff. This is, you know, we're in the middle of it, right? Like we think this is going to go on. This is probably going to go on for a while. So we're all just doing the best we can. Yep. Our is, governor just extended our stay at home until the end of the month. So yeah, ours is uh school is school in Connecticut is out until May 20th. Uh, at uh, our early. school's out indefinite, like till the end of the year. The, they've already, we the only reason that they are not is that the, he's trying to leave a window just in case. I mean, they're just being conservative, and yeah. because the superintendents are trying to stick back because they want to, you know, try and do all the events and try and do all the stuff. Uh, I mean, because if they can go back June first for two weeks, they will. Um, how will all that would work? I don't know, but that's they're just <laughs> trying to rather than make a big decision for the rest of the year, they're trying to, you know plan it out a month in advance who knows i'm not in charge of making big decisions i just talk about video games so um we make the decisions that matter on this yeah we make show. the decisions that matter like <laughs> we tell ubisoft to make just dance unlimited free for a month we're like listen ubisoft let's do this so um let's talk about another kind of neat thing and let's talk about this game called grounded and yes kate says the governor's trying to keep people hopeful i agree with that um I think that he that's absolutely another way that he's trying to do it. Because if people, you know, we don't want people just freaking out uh, for, you know, if it can be avoided. So let's talk about this game called Grounded. Jeff, have you ever heard of Grounded? I have not until you told me about it right before we got on the right. show today. So Grounded is a game It's coming to Xbox and PC, specifically Steam. And it is uh, coming into early access. It's being made by Obsidian. Now, Obsidian is normally a big RPG company. And so for them to come in, they're making a kind of open world exploration survival game that is basically Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the survival game. You play a kid that shrunk in your backyard and you have to make weapons and explore and build settlements. And eventually survive and oh, work your way. This was announced on an inside Xbox last year. Yes. Okay, I remember that now. Okay. okay. So the, what's weird is I thought that you, when they announced it, I thought you were action figures. And it turns out you are not. You are actually children who have been shrunken. So this is literally Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And so let's throw some – let's throw – just to give some people idea what the graphic art style is going to be. This is when I knew that they were children and not action figures. So that's the uh, front. That, that's basically like an image of you know what it looks like. It's a team-based survival game. You can be running around a backyard, fighting ants and spiders and scorpions, just like in Honey I Shrunk the Kids. The difference is, you are going to be gathering resources so you can make new weapons and build settlements, like say these really cool forts, which. Uh, pardon the image, it's a little small here, but that's something that a player can build. You build walls and things like that. There's a story, things to explore. There's like there's some weird secret elements that are in that backyard. And the idea is you need to get into the house to find the machine that shrunk you and it's broken. So you need to not only find it, but you need to find the parts that are all out in the yard and repair it and then get brought back to regular size. I think this looks super cool. It's coming to Xbox Game Pass and uh, Steam Early Access on July 28th. It's going to be an Xbox Game Preview game, but it's going to be available as part of the Xbox Game Pass. I think this is really cool. I like survival games. It's tough to get into them sometimes because there's just 
so much. But this one looks like it might be kind of just that right little bit of cool. Also, I absolutely love Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. So playing that in video game form sounds awesome. <laughs> Jeff, thoughts? Yes, it, it does look cool. I, um, I'm i not the huge, the biggest fan of survival games, but this takes it in a way most people, usually when you think survival, you know, usually the genre survival horror comes to mind. And it's usually you're avoiding zombies and that. And this is definitely taking it in a way in, that I wouldn't expect. And yes, I'm like you. I do. I love Honey, I Shrunk the Kids too. Watched it all the time growing up. Um, if you haven't seen it or if you just want to see it again, go on Disney Plus. It's on there. Yeah, man, listen. Oh, and you know they're making a new one. Yes, they're making a show. Right. Right. And Rick Moranis is reprising his role, which, which is, is amazing. Crazy, because he had sworn off acting to you know stay with his kids for a long time. But I guess they're older now, so I mean, you know, that, it is great. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids would not have been the same if they had replaced Rick Moranis with like, you know, Jack Black or something, right? Like, yeah. you know, it would it's... have been the same. Although, admittedly, a Jack Black led Honey, I Shrunk the Kids would be a very different experience, and I'd be down. But it. Actually, Paul, can we do Paul Rudd in, in instead of – if we had to. Paul <laughs> Rudd in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids would have been fine. Um, but this is going to be great. I can't wait. And it, not a very long time. And it's going to be an early access. So this is going to be one of those games that's going to be kind of developed along with the community. So I'm interested to see how they uh, – you know, how it works and how they – you know how like what kind of community feedback they take uh let's see here uh buddy of mine from college is suggesting the rock you want the rock to replace rick moranis in honey i shrunk the kids that would also be a very different game a different movie uh jenna what do you what are your thoughts on the rock replacing rick moranis in a new But what if he was playing a nerdy scientist? Like they put like glasses on him and everything and like did their best to make him not look like that big beefcake? No. Would you watch it anyway? Well, you know how I feel about The Rock. She would watch it anyway because she absolutely <laughs> uh, loves The Rock. So, yeah, it would be interesting to see. Again, so this game, not long – it's not long uh, before we get a chance to play it. I'm looking forward to giving it, giving it a go. And it's uh, grounded uh, from Obsidian. Obsidian is such a weird choice because they're just they just they they did like Fallout New Vegas, right? The the funniest yeah. part about th is watching them during the Inside Xbox where they this, that happened this week where they were showing some of the other Obsidian games. And it's like they did South Park and they, and explaining to Evan like yeah, so they 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 did all these really grown up games and now here they are, boom. Uh, what appears to be a kid-friendly survival game. Again, not a lot of survival games are super kid-friendly, so that should be kind of fun. Obviously, the big one, Minecraft, is kid-friendly, but you know what I mean, guys. Yeah. Um, so, Jeff, what are your thoughts on No Man's Sky? Moving topics. So, No Man's Sky, I know when it came out, when it originally came out, it was not well-received. They did some updates to it. People like it more, and it looks like they keep giving it more and more updates, to add more and more to kind of give it that image that they were going for at the beginning when they originally came out with the game. Okay, yeah, I mean you're right. It they, they were the kings of overpromising and underdelivering, but um, it came out. Would you believe it came out in 2016? Twenty. Wow, almost four years. This game came out a long time ago. You know what? Let me double check that because that doesn't sound right. That's what I read, but now I'm I'm questioning it. <laughs> yeah, oh, how about this? Not just 2016, August of 2016. Yeah, this game has been out for freaking ever, and so when it launched, we actually have a review on EngageFamilyGaming.com. Uh, James Pisano, actually, uh, the video guy, reviewed it for us. He was uh, very bullish on it. Absolutely loved it. 
And um, But ever since then, they just put their head to the wheel. They knew people were mad. And they just went silent. And they have continually upgraded this game. And this has been like a real interesting redemption story. Because they just keep adding new content. They... They added multiplayer, they added a VR mode, they added a kind of a creative mode where you can just do whatever you want. And then they did uh, No Man's Sky Next, which basically added third person exploration and just a whole new, all sorts of new modes, revamped everything. It's unrecognizable from the original launch. And now they added mechs. Now, you know me. I do love me some mechs. So, uh, they add, I think, not only did they add mechs, to me, it looks like they added E-frames. If you, uh, if you know what that means, um, congratulations. You had a great childhood. So, these things... I do not know what that means. You don't know what an E-frame is? You never watched... It's because you're too young. It's because you're too young. Is it what... Is a I have no idea what show is it based off of. <laughs> <laughs> I try to come up with an answer. I'm like, no, I'm just gonna embarrass myself. It's Exo Squad. You never watched Exo Squad? I've never heard of Exo Squad. <laughs> Yo, we got my boy Bill Hawkins. I, I mean, I was gonna go for Transformers, Voltrons, like that. Nope, nope that nope, was nope. not. Okay, so I'm gonna say this: Exo Squad is probably like if there was a cartoon from like the late 80s early 90s that was super due for like a netflix series reboot with like nice new animation and like a bigger budget it's exo squad exo squad was a show about a war between you know mankind and these neo sapiens who are like these genetically created you know improved humans and like a civil war and e-frames were basically like mech suits that you hopped into and they all looked different and they were super cool and i loved it and it was one of the things it was one of the first shows that i ever watched that had like a real serial storyline where episode to episode to episode really mattered and my gosh it was so cool but uh they you added know, them i'm looking at it i'm surprised i haven't seen it because it says it came out it was from September 11, 1993 to November 3rd, 1994. Yeah. It was so, a year. But, it was a but year. But also, so it was in syndication, so it might have not aired in my area. Yeah. It wasn't tied to a network. Yeah. Exo Squad is really, really good, and I'm surprised that nobody's grabbed it, but I'm sure there's probably the reasons. But so No Man's Sky, they're adding mechs. They're in there now. And so these mechs are – a interesting way, and I knew uh, I, I had a feeling that evoking Exo Squad was going to summon Jeremy. Jeremy sits in the same room with his wife, who uh, plays video games and kind of listens to us. And whenever I say something that like energizes him, he I imagine him like flipping around the room to grab his phone to log in just to like shout about what I was talking about very briefly. <laughs> Uh, last week it was when we were blaspheming Castlevania 2 like I imagine him like tripping over his coffee table trying to get his phone so the uh, so No Man's Sky they added these mechs essentially the mechs are a more novel way to get around and also uh, you can walk over certain terrain elements that would have stopped you before also they make you immune to some of the various environmental effects also they just look freaking cool and I think that might be part of it so uh, yeah, it sounds great. Kate says that that's exactly right. I just basically described their <laughs> viewing experience of the EFG show. And listen, I'm always happy. So what you're saying is if I want an extra viewer for part of it, I should just say really inflammatory things about retro games and just get them to, to log in anytime. So it's like cheap pot. It, it's cheap heat. Jeff, it's just, it's like walking into a Boston stadium and being like, what's up? You know, how about them Knicks? You know, that kind of thing. So the, okay. So that's the news for No Man's Sky. What are your thoughts on uh, the, the Lego Super Mario Brothers stuff? I need to see more. Uh, I know they announced a price, right? Yes. Well, that's what they Six did. 
Yeah. Um, so the, <clears throat> excuse me, they did. They announced the other, the price the other day. It is, uh, 60 bucks. Yes. And to me, it doesn't look like it has as much as a $60 Lego set should have. It looks um, kind of bare. Um, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I know but... there's more technology in it than your typical Lego set. There's the screen on Mario. There's the sounds and all that. I guess I just need to know more about it before I decide if this is a purchase to make for my family. I get it. So for people that are interested in seeing a little bit more, uh, let's go to uh, the screen share because I can do that. And here we are on the on Z Lego website. And let's see. Hey everybody, welcome to my. Uh, I got a weird beep, so I got concerned. All right, so let's learn more about it. I love it how uh, Kate specifically said it's like wearing a Yankees jersey to Fenway. I can just get – so this is the Adventures with Mario starter course. So the big key is the Mario figure, right? And so the Mario figure – I don't know if I can zoom in. So his eyes, his mouth, and that little square in between the two buttons on his chest – are screens they're little lcd screens so it actually animates like he blinks his eyes he looks around he you know grimaces when he gets hit he opens his mouth when he says wahoo and stuff like that um that was actually a pretty good mario wahoo uh, i'm gonna give myself <laughs> some credit and let's see uh, and then the screen in the front kind of tells you what's going on. Uh, Jeremy says the price is probably because they built, they know collectors are going to assume limited print and after the off the shelf, the prices will skyrocket. I don't necessarily disagree with you, although I, I actually have it on good authority that this is not a small, this is not a small commitment. This is a partnership with Nintendo. So this is one of those things that they're going to be making a lot of. Um, so and to... Lego's pretty good at making sure they don't make things very limited edition. They know how much their products sell. Yeah. So this is the box. Admittedly, it's another language. Forgive me on that one. But so this is the box. The idea is you are making courses and you are playing with Mario. Um, what I my issue, and this is just you know we'll leave it on here. My issue for me is like I don't know how I play with it. Other than, like, cool, I make a course, and I have Mario go through. Like, what's the challenge, if there is any? So I don't really know what the game is with this. Because they've kind of... Now, they haven't really described it as a game. But it looks like there are game-like elements. So for me, I'm curious to see what it is. With that said, it's Mario Legos. So Daddy must have it, right? Like... I gotta yeah. have the thing. Um, so we've already pre-ordered it. It's coming out August one. So we will have it. I, I think ours. We pre-ordered it, but you know, it's out. Of, it was out of stock. So I guess we're gonna have to wait until it comes in. Um, so and saying Lego sets cycle every six months, except for long running sets. I'll say this much, Jeremy. Like there hasn't been a set that I have wanted that I haven't been able to get my hands on. So, I mean, I think for the amount of time, I think that that I don't necessarily disagree, but the you know, they have they do a pretty good job of making enough. They don't really have a production issue. This year they're going to have a production issue just because everyone has a production issue. But I've never yes. had a Lego set that I couldn't get my hands on. Um so that's what this weird thing is. So this is Adventures with Mario. And they have a Bowser's Castle set. The Bowser Castle one looks cool. And again, it looks awesome. I mean, it's a Bowser's Castle Lego set. That's the one, like, I feel like there might be some people that might buy the Bowser's Castle expansion even without this initial game, just because that is legitimately a Bowser's Castle set. I don't know. We're going to have to see. So, that is... Lego Super Mario, man, yeah, it it 
it's neat. I just want to know what it is. We'll know, and I will uh, report back to everybody because we're going to find out as soon as we have more details. So, um, and because they're going to show us more at the very least, I'll, I'll have it at some point. Um, so last little piece of news, and then we can open it up to questions. Although at this point, if people watching have questions and you want to throw them in the chat while we kind of go over our last news story, uh, that would be cool. Let's see here. Um, time will tell, Jeremy. Jeremy said that they will con- likely continue with Nintendo as partners, but they'll sunset this series and start a new run. I don't know. We'll, time will tell. I think it's going to depend on how successful this is. and Because if they know they can print money by just making more expansions to this Mario thing, I would presume that they would continue to do so. Although, if this just accelerates us to a Legend of Zelda, like a, like a traditional Legend of Zelda set, like the... the, the I mean, just just imagine it, guys. <laughs> you know? I want the Lego Nintendo game made by Traveler's Tales. I don't. That would be garbage. Those games <laughs> are not good. Like, they're good, but they're not good. And the problem is that it would just be a waste. Because, you know. They're fun time killers. Yeah, Nintendo doesn't do that, though. Like, Nintendo makes, like really really good stuff not time killer anyway we can we can talk about that um another time let's talk about the uh, but zelda legos like that just feels like a no-brainer to me so last news story uh everybody watching if you have questions or topics that you want to discuss with us uh throw them in the chat while we talk about this i'm going to talk a little bit about streets of rage 4 because man that game is coming out very soon it is coming in hot and they just revealed a ton of interesting details about it this week. Jeff, do you have any experience with the Streets of Rage franchise? I have played them, yes. I believe I had the Genesis collection on 360 when I had a 360. And they were on there. But not a lot. Okay. All right. So, um, Drew coming in from the chat saying Lego Animal Crossing. Okay, I buy that one for a dollar. That one sounds really smart. So, okay. So, Streets of Rage 4, they this has been announced for a while. Uh, I think about a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. We knew it was coming. It's got a really sharp uh, and uh, a sharp art style. It is not a, um, you know, it's not cel-shaded. It's not pixel art. It's just this really crisp animation. Absolutely love it. I would recommend everybody that's watching, if you haven't seen it yet, go look up a Streets of Four, Streets of Rage 4 YouTube video with some of the trailers. You'll see today they announced some more information. Number one, we know the price. It's going to be about 25 bucks US. That's not bad. It's coming to the PS4. It's coming to the Xbox. It's coming to PC. It's coming to Nintendo Switch. And it, that that's super important. But they also announced that they are... They have brought back basically all the characters. So there were some new ones, but they brought characters back from Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3. So it's going to be about 12 different total fighters that you'll be able to choose. And you'll be able to also unlock like a retro pixel version of those characters. So if you want to use them in their original form, you can do that. And it just kind of melds in with the art style, uh, which I think is a super neat idea. One that I hope that they do when they inevitably make TMNT 4 Turtles in Time HD, right? Like, could you imagine? Oh, it'd be so great. So, the other thing is... I mean, is, they kind of already made, remade TMNT 4, and it wasn't good, so... <laughs> yeah, but that was that was bad. Now they can do it again and make it good. <laughs> and they can add the fifth Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, because there's there's the new fifth one now, and they've been Power Rangers. Listen, there's Is a there a new fifth one now? We're not there's talking about... We're not talking about Venus from the... No, we're the... not talking about Venus de Milo. We're talking about a new one. I think her name okay. is like Karen. It's not Karen, but it's something like that. It is a human friend that they had that was not April O'Neil who was exposed to mutagen and touched one of them and turned into a turtle. So she went okay. the other way. Um, so as a result, she's not named after an artist. Um, so in a, in other obscure turtle lore. So um, Street to Rage 4, one of the other announcements they made is that you can play through with the previous uh, game soundtracks. So the uh, 
Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3 soundtracks are absolutely some of the best video game soundtracks of all time. I know this. I love them. I have never, I've actually never played the original Streets of Rage games. I wasn't a Genesis guy. But the, I love beat em ups. Uh, and so, the, but I know the soundtracks are amazing. My cousin Peter Brown, who now works for PlayStation, gave me some of that, in, uh, you know, kind of turned me on to those. And man, is he right. They're so great. So to be able to play through with some of not only the new hotness, but also go back and play with the previous soundtracks is super cool. So it's going to be a neat beat up game with some really cool, interesting characters for 25 bucks. And there was a leak where they thought it was going to come out in April 28th, but the company has come out and said that that is incorrect. So it should be coming soon. Um, so even if it's a month or two after that, like we're not that far away and I am very excited. Yeah. Um, if it comes within the next few months, it's coming out at a perfect time when we have nothing else to play. So, yeah, um, Drew, we did get a question from the chat, but Drew made a comment said a reboot would be worth a look. Um, it's there. the The Streets of Rage Four is more or less a reboot. It's another version of the game, so you definitely uh, it is certainly worth a quick YouTube. Uh, just to see what kind of shenanigans they're doing. So, question from the chat. He said, are you following Sea of Stars, the Kickstarter? Um, sea of Stars is the Kickstarter for Sabotage's new game, which is that Chrono Trigger-esque role-playing game set in the same universe as The Messenger. Uh, yes, I am following that. Now, we yes. Know- the only thing that makes me sad about that game is that it is very far off, probably coming out in like 2022, because it looks so good, and I cannot wait. Sabotage, I met that that team. Um, I love every single one of those guys. They are super cool, very down-to-earth. It is a small team, and every one of them absolutely loves like their laser-focused niche. Like The music guy is just just the music guy. And he's so good at what he does. And the designers are also very great. Um, and they're super friendly people. Can't want someone to succeed more. And we know the messenger, one of, uh, for me, I'll say it. I think it's the best Ninja Gaiden game ever made. And, um, it may be my favorite Metroidvania. It's so good. And it's so goofy and stupid with some extra stuff going on. So for them to come out and make a, a for them to come out and make a role playing game, sure, I'm I'm down. If you guys, we know the music's going to be good. We know they're good and skilled designers, but the the waiting until 2022 is going to be it's going to be hard. I didn't back it on Kickstarter. I make a, a point now that I don't back video games on Kickstarter. I back board games, but really the only time I back the board games is when I know that it's either important to help make a creator's dream come true or because it's a, a better value but for video games I just don't it's I've been burned too many times yeah I don't make it I Kickstarter makes me nervous I know things come out but I don't like paying for it than having to wait the waiting game I yeah. will be perfectly honest I have kickstarted one thing in my life and it should what be coming it? within um, last October I kickstarted I think I've talked about it the switch mania. The Switch Year One book. Um, oh, that's Hagen's right. Alley you buy those book. Yeah, I buy weird gaming books. Uh, Hagen's Alley Book Company is coming out with each year. They're coming out with a book about the Switch during that year and all the games that came out and everything, physical releases. And so I yeah. just collect video game books along with my collection of video games. That's a uh, listen. That is a noble cause. So I primarily, my Kickstarter activity is board games. So, and at this point I've slowed down to the point where, again, like I said, it's either I'm backing something because I make, because I know I will make the difference in someone's having, someone having their dream come true and they get to have their game published. Or on the other side, it is, I get to, um, you know, it's a great, a, a, it's a good value. And, I don't even remember what the last thing I kickstarted. I know I did something interesting. Uh, oh, the Marvel one uh, for come on uh, from Simon, which I am Marvel United, which I am very excited about because man, am I going to get a whole bunch of really cool minis? So yeah. So to answer your question, Jeremy, yes, I am following Sea of Stars. We are very excited, but we are not excited to have to be excited for the next two years to play it. 
<laughs> um, let's see here. And Jeremy says, um, you know, in regards to Kickstarter, he says, see, I love backing something and completely forgetting about it and then getting it two years later like a surprise Christmas. Listen, um, that that's legit. There's something that he happened. said, like getting a that Christmas happened. present for yourself, right? Now, you know, like that happened <laughs> was last year. My wife, our my wife backed a blender thing, and it showed up on our doorstep. And it's like, oh well, this costs a hundred dollars. I don't remember backing it, but hey, we have a blender with that came with drink mixes. Sure, sure. Why not? Right. That sounds awesome. Um, th- that is a cool thing about Kickstarter, and. For a while, and the general will, con- will confirm this, for a while I had a problem. It was bad. I was backing stuff on Kickstarter like every week. And I just got burned a few times. And ultimately I wasn't, you know, I wasn't happy with everything. So I have since slowed down. But now I, I make a point to, to grab, a, grab a thing here or there. I certainly backed Dungeon Drop pretty quick, uh, which was a board game that came out. Um, and that is a pretty cool little game. So, uh, Jeff, would you believe me if I told you that that was another episode of the EFG show? I believe you. It was a long one this we time. We did it. Well, you know what? There was a lot to talk about. Um, we had a lot of people here, um, you know, a very engaging chat, even though uh, several of them spent some time making fun of me, but that's okay. I do that myself. Um, so we're going to be back next week. Everybody watching, do me a favor. Share this video out to your wall because we're hoping to and encourage some people to, to uh, give us a follow because we would um, absolutely love to have a bigger audience as the weeks go by. Because, listen, we're all trapped at home. We may as well spend one evening hanging out talking about games together. So, uh, Jeff, thank you very much. Everybody watching, thank you for joining us. Uh, Next week, we will be talking about whatever news there is. And if nothing else, we're going to be shouting about Final Fantasy VII Remake (laughs) for as long as you will listen to us. So until then, have a great week. Have a good night. And until next time, don't forget to get your family game on. We'll see you guys soon. Bye now. Bye. I, I saw what you just said there, Kate. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>